uh, Exodus, the 19th chapter. We're going to break in at the third verse. As our topic for this morning is dealing with Thanksgiving. Pray that you all had a good time with your family and your loved ones. That you ate good, laughed good, created some memories. I'm grateful for the time I've had with my family. And it's only by the grace of God. Exodus, the 19th chapter, if you got to say amen. If you don't say hold on, all right, all right, all right, I got you. Second, second book of the Bible, right after Genesis. I'm, I'm, not being, I'm not being petty. I wasn't being petty. I'm just trying to help. But I'll be reading from the King James Version, and it reads, And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which... Thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord hath spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. I want to speak from a subject this morning. Actions speak louder than words. You may be seated. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I, I am truly, truly grateful uh, to stand here before you today because it's only by God's grace that I opened my two blessings, which were my two eyelids. And then I was able to put my feet on the floor and stand up and put one foot in front of the other. I was in my right mind, and my family was doing well. And when you think about the little things, you can't count all the blessings. Even just today, you getting here, putting, having a car if you drove, being able to put your key in ignition, turn that joker, and it actually turned on. And you got gas to get here, and you got here safely. And then if you've been here long enough, you understand parking at New Community. <laughs> Which concerning that area, sometimes I thank God I'm a pastor. because <laughs> You got to have a spot for the preacher. <laughs> Close to the door. <laughs> but it's the little things you have to be thankful for. And sometimes we... Uh, get so caught up on what we want, we forget what we already have. Amen? Amen. Amen. We, for, we forget what we already have. And, 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 and as I reflect on the holiday season, I, I realize that some of the things I complain about, I need to be grateful for. You know, I, I got kids, a lot of them, and, um, <laughs> you know, you step on a Lego, you step on a Iron Man or a dog, you know, stab your foot, and oh, you know you get upset. But at the at the same time, what if it wasn't there? The sounds of laughter in my walls of my home. My kids running down the stairs like a herd of elephants. <laughs> it gets on my nerves because somebody gonna hit, they gonna hit that flow. Somebody gonna hit it. It's coming. And being the dad I am, I'm going to laugh. <laughs> oh, I'm laughing. 
Now, I'm not missing that opportunity. <laughs> then I will see what is needed. <laughs> I'm laughing. But what if, what if those sounds weren't there? You got bills. I get it. They get on my nerves, too. But there's somebody that wished they was in a position to have bills. They don't have bills. And so at the end of the day, there's always a way to be thankful. The Hebrew word for thanksgiving is todah. Todah also means acknowledgement. It also means confession. It means to express thanks to God. So some of what we were singing today was toda unto God, as he is our redeemer. Our hallelujah belongs to him. We're acknowledging him, amen. We're giving him praise, and that is what we are commanded to do. Psalm 106 verse 1 says, praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. He's worthy of the praise every day. There's, there's a, she's no longer with us, but uh, uh, in Mount Hebron, there was a lady named Mother Crutcher, and she used to sing, every day is a day of thanksgiving. She said, don't you know God? <laughs> and I was waiting for her to say it every time. And as I got older, I realized every day is a day of thanksgiving. Every day that you wake up on this side of the dirt, because <laughs> there's somebody there planning a funeral. Somebody didn't make it to November 26. But for his grace, especially when you see, you see what's going on in the world, what's going on in Palestine, what's going on uh, uh, even around Cleveland, the shooting down at uh, Public Square. I, I, I hope the young people, have, I hope they made it. I pray they pulled through. But I just had to hold my kids a little tighter. And that's why them jokers don't go everywhere, too. Right. My daughter, 14, she be fussing with me all the time. My answer is no. You don't need to go. Why? For what? Who going to be there? Why? Who? Do I know the parents? What's their number? I need to talk to them. You ain't just going. Uh, my kids don't even walk down the street. I'm honest. Like, they don't. I'd be like, who? What? PJ? I don't play that. It walk down. All I see is a white van, somebody jumping out. And then my, my kid in sex trafficking, and I ain't got no, And that's why I like, you know what? This ain't got nothing to do with my sermon. <laughs> no, but for real, like, people, parents are becoming very clever and putting apple tags in their kids' shoes or apple tags in the hair bowls. I'm like, I know that's right. Because it's 2023, folks. It's crazy. Back to my message. <laughs> and so, so I'm grateful. I'm grateful to hug, hug my family. Amen. Hug my kids, have them every, in everything. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That, that, that means no matter where we find ourselves, if it ain't nothing but that God is still God, in everything, give thanks. And why, why is giving thanks so important? One of the reasons giving thanks is so important is because it keeps bitterness at bay. It keeps bitterness out of your heart because you can't be bitter and give thanks. Yeah, you can't do both. You have to be one or the other. Amen. Uh, uh, this 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 weekend is, was a challenging weekend for me. My little guy, you know, Jaden, he's battling sickle cell, and we've been blessed because he doesn't have a lot of pain crisis. He's not in the hospital a lot, but this weekend he had to go to the hospital, and um, I, I just was sitting there. And a little man came up to me. And he, he's what I love about Jaden. The only, only he's only four years old, but he's understanding how to thrive with the disease. And so he knows. He said, "Dad, I need my heating pad." I said, "Okay, we got a heating pad." He said, "It's not doing nothing." <laughs> I said, "Oh, it's not doing nothing." Okay. He came back. He said, "Dad, we need to go to the hospital." I said, man, "Just just wait a little bit." He said, "Nothing is working." <laughs> I looked at Tiff. I said, Tiff, you going or I'm going. And he wanted us both to go. 
And so we're sitting in the hospital, and the pain is, you know, getting more and more intense. And they give them morphine. They give them codeine and it, it, to help with the pain. But as they did the x-ray, they find out that he's backed up. His bowels is not regulating like they should. And I'm sitting there, and he's just looking at me like, Daddy, do something. <laughs> but even in this moment, I had to give God thanks. Even in this moment, I had to. There's some parent out here that don't even have a child. I have to give God thanks. I have to say, God, even in this. Why? Because I can't let bitterness get in my heart. Because if I let it get in my heart, then it's going to, it's going to affect how I see God. It's going to affect how I see the sovereignty of God or the intention of God. God, you could have stopped this. Why did my son have to have this disease? God, you this and that. My, my wife and I are suffering. We in ministry. We serve. Why do we have to? No, 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 no. No, no. Let your will be done. I trust you. I trust you. You allowed this for a reason. And even in this, God, I give you thanks. Even in this, God, I give you praise. Amen. Why? Because Romans 8, 28 says that all things work together. For the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And even though I can't understand how all things work and what he's doing in the midst and in the moment, I will trust him. I will, I will be confident in this, that he knows what he's doing when I don't understand it. All things work together, right? Another reason why it's good to give God praise and to give God thanks is to remind us that everything we have is a gift from God. Everything. Every, I, I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how, how, how many degrees you got. How, what, I don't care how good your job is, and how many people you know. Everything you have is from God. And it becomes a sad commentary when people think they have what they have in and of themselves. You know, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a phrase that, 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 that just, it, I cringe with it because it, it, it comes up against theology for me, and that's self-made. Self-made. I, I get it. You got it out the mud. You hustled. You grind. You did what you had to do. I understand that. You was by yourself. Nobody was with you. You was alone. But who gave your body the strength? <laughs> Ain't nobody that self-made. Because let your health leave. At the end of the day, everything we have is from God. That's why it's, 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 it's important to stay humble and thank God for everything he blesses you with. Or else you're going to start walking around here arrogant, thinking you all that. And I don't want, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Another reason why it's good to give thanks is that in giving thanks, sometimes you can realize you got more than enough. Some of us got clothes we ain't even wore yet. Shoes we ain't wore but once. Probably won't wear them again. Shouldn't have never bought that color. <laughs> it was an impulse buy. The deal was too good. Yeah. Hey, hey, listen, here's another way to find out you got more than you need. Move. Okay, I got some witnesses. Like, man, I got four of these? <laughs> Folks, this is, if you got some friends that'll help you move, that's how you find out who your friends are, too. They're like, hey, can I have this one? <laughs> you gonna take this over to the new house? <laughs> you, you still wearing this? <laughs> you, you, you find out you got a lot of stuff that you don't even... Brand new. We probably going to y'all houses right now have a good garage sale. Come back with some stacks. <laughs> just money. Some of us got money just sitting in our closet. Man, how big? How far does closet go back? But it's important. It's important to give God thanks. Because one of the things we're doing is recognizing that the gift is never more important than the giver. I don't care how much God ever gives us. It's never more important than him. And when the, when the blessings start to become more important than the blesser, things are out of line, out of whack. You, you out of order. <laughs> but but here, here in the text, I know it may, may not seem like a Thanksgiving message, but the Holy Spirit led me here, so I'm just being obedient. 
But here is a picture of the Israelites at the Mount of Sinai. Now, just to, to kind of put this and give you a visual and put this in context, this mountain has to be big because the Israelites were around almost about 3 million people. So keep that in mind, that all these people, after maybe about three months from Egypt, they come to this mountain, and here God wants to establish a covenant with them. Took him a day to get them out of Egypt, but now he's got to get Egypt out of Israel. And he wants them to understand what he has done and let that be the motive for the covenant. And so my first point, as we look here in verse, verse 4, is to remember. And I know I've kind of said some of that already, but that's okay. But verse 4 he says here, God says to Moses, I need you to tell them, you have seen what I did in Egypt mm -hmm. and how I bear you on eagles, eagles wings and brought you unto myself. So the first point here, God wants the Israelites to remember what he has done. So Psalm 103 and I, and I don't know it by heart, so I'm about to turn to it real quick, but I know where it's at. It's actually one of my favorite scriptures, but I should know it by heart, right? So I guess it's not my favorite scripture. <laughs> no, just keeping it 100, Taylor. I'm just keeping it 100. Psalm 103, uh, Psalm 103, verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now, the thing is, I think it's humanly impossible to remember all the benefits of God and all the blessings of God. But don't, well, remember some of them. <laughs> you ought to remember something that God has done. Amen? You, you, you ought to remember something. You ought, you, you ought to have experienced firsthand God either providing, delivering, or thanking him for saving. He's either provided, or I can throw another one in there, sustained, uh-huh, delivered, or you just think about the cross and get happy that he saved you. Either way, it is good to look back. <laughs> because it can give you a motive for moving forward. Help me, Holy Ghost. You, you got to remember, he says, you have saved. Seen, meaning you were in it. You were a witness. You had front row seats of me doing the miraculous in your life. A song says, when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I have been blessed. I've got a, anybody got a testimony in here? Oh, okay. I've got a testimony. I, I've seen, look, look, look here in the text, he says here, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, right? He's destroyed them, and how I bear you on eagles' wings. That, that poetic phrase gives us at least two things that we can see there. Number one, if he bear them on eagles' wings, uh, a bear means to carry. And so he carried the Israelites. Uh, there's some seasons where God carried you. You didn't have the strength. You, 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 you didn't have the, the willpower, but, but he picked you up. Didn't leave you in your condition. I, I know there were some seasons in my life where God carried me through. Where I mentally just couldn't take it no more. And he sustained me. Didn't move the situation, but he delivered me by giving me the strength to endure it. Come on, somebody. But it also, it also lets us know that he was present. He was there. That, that, that he is a present help in the time of trouble. Amen. He says, listen, I need y'all to remember. I need y'all to remember when y'all was crying out to me because Pharaoh was, was, uh, was uh, uh, giving you work that was unbearable, having you work in the heat and, and having an uh, arduous, la laborious task on you. And, and I heard your cry. It got to my ears. 
And so I raised up Moses, told him to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. And I, I, I sent the plagues and, and here, that y- y'all remember there was an army in front of you and a raging sea? The army behind you and a raging sea in front of you? And what did Moses tell him to do? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Can you remember when you seen the salvation of the Lord? Can you remember when you cried out to God and said, God, if you don't help me, it can't be done. If you don't open the door, and he opened the door, he answered the prayer, he healed your body, he provided the finances, he gave you the words to say, he he, he allowed favor on you, you got the job. Sound like a... There's been some beneficiaries in the house this morning. We can't forget his benefits. I know a couple of couples that had miscarriages and they said they'll never have children. And now they got a tribe like I got a tribe. God is able. (laughs) He says, listen, I need y'all to remember I was there. I delivered. I answered your prayers. And it was miraculous. Three months ago, the Israelites were were faced with an impossible situation as they're having a raging sea in front of them and an angry army behind them. And then God tells Moses to lift up his rod. And now the waters part. Y'all got to think about this. It's three million people. And, and, and another thing, we, we can't preach it today. God could have took them another route. He chose to take them to the Red Sea. <laughs> There's a lesson in your troubles. There's a reason why you go through a certain storm. He could have called, uh, 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 had you avoided or stopped it. But, but there's something he's trying to either teach you about you or about him. So here, here, here the Israelites, the waters stand up, and, and, and then you dry ground at the bottom of a sea. Come on, somebody. And now all night, three million people go across. I'm thinking, man, these chariots were slow. <laughs> Think about it, y'all on wheels. You can't catch three million people going across a sea? What kind of horses you got? The one from Shrek? God is still involved. And they get across. Amen? We've had some experience that if God wasn't involved, it wasn't going to happen. And God is saying, Israel, I need y'all to remember this. I can't leave verse 4 yet because there's still something very important. He says, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagle's wings and brought you unto who? Myself. He said, I saved y'all for me. <laughs> I didn't deliver you so you can just go willy-nilly and live how you want to live. I, I protected you for me. I provided a way so that we could be together. I opened that door so that we could have a relationship. I wanted to show you the type of God I am so that you can give me your heart so that you can come unto me. There's something about a storm that would create a deeper intimacy that blessings don't give you with God. But it's with I I guess I got a few witnesses in here that when you go through a situation that only God can handle and maybe God come through, you should have a different attitude about the God you serve. Oh, no, 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 no. I know a God that's able to deliver. I know a God that's able to set. Wait wait a minute. Did we pray? Wait a minute. Did we talk to God? Because I know. You and him get closer. Me and God done got closer. I, can, I, I always would love to know 
if I could just get in, in heaven, if I can get a replay, a movie on life after Lazarus, after Lazarus got out that grave, I just want reality TV to follow his sisters around. And I want them mic'd up. Can you eat the next dinner with Lazarus sitting there and we done had his funeral? I don't even want to eat. So what was it like, bruh? Did you see the light? <laughs> Did you see a hallway? <laughs> what happened? Man, the way that they talked after that, it had to bring them closer to the one who said, I am the light and the resurrection. <laughs> Hopefully after you've gone through something, huh? You remember. You're closer to him, amen? amen. Verse 5. Verse 5 is where I get the title of this message. Action speaks louder than words. Verse 5. First point is that we have to remember, but verse 5 lets us know we have to respond. After you remember all that God has done, what is the fitting response for a God who has done miracles in your life? Help me preach, Holy Ghost. What is a fitting response for a God who has opened doors that no man can shut and closed doors that no man What What is the fitting response VB3, what's the bidding response for a God who has confused doctors? What, what, what is a fitting response for someone who says, I no, no longer need to take medication? What, what is a fitting response for someone that says, hey, I used to be on this corner hustling, but God done changed my life. Now I'll empower my community instead of infecting my community. Yeah. I, I get it. I get it that, that, that we sing praises, but I, I don't think it's the most fit response. I think the most fit response is actions. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm almost done. Yeah, but, but, but I think the actions uh, uh, further affirm words. I, I get it. We're going to sing praises and thank them, but what, what, what are those praises if we're going to leave here and be disobedient? And I'm not saying don't thank him, because we need to thank him. The scriptures say to thank him. But, but I believe in this text, God was looking for a nonverbal response from the Israelites. Because he says here in the text, now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my what? Covenant. God, God is saying, listen, I, I need some action. James 1.22 says, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers, only deceiving ourselves. So I, th this is the really the, my whole message in one sentence. If we really going to thank them, serve them. If we're going to thank them, submit to him. See, see, it's one thing to tell your spouse you love them. But baby, if them actions don't line up, it start sounding like blah, blah, blah. And that's how your ex became your ex. <laughs> Too much of this. Not enough action. Or the action didn't line up to the standards that you were going to accept in this relationship. <laughs> and you had to bow out gracefully. Amen? But one booger came in with the right actions. Not only did they have the words, but they had the actions. And you didn't know what to do with yourself. You said, ooh, I ain't never seen one of these before. <laughs> he bought me flowers. She did this. She did that. He did that. He cooked. And you, you're like, ooh, whatever you want, Mr. Right. <laughs> whatever you want, Mrs. Right. Right, because action, right? Let me, let me tell you, this is when I knew. I think I told the story already, but I'm going to tell it again because I'm the preacher, so you can't stop me. <laughs> but I was in college. He got cut off, didn't have no money, right? I'm sitting in the apartment with my, with my roommate. We in our winter coats playing PlayStation. <laughs> got one of them big, you know, them big cups you get from the arena. And I'm putting it in the microwave and I'm warming it up. 
It's like I have hot water, and I'm really washing up out of this cup. So it was hard times, you know. I'm dating Tiff. She comes over. I didn't want her to come over, but she comes over anyway. She bundled up and her hat and her coat with us. <laughs> Watching us play PlayStation. And I'm like, man, this does not look good. <laughs> it's, it's not, hey, my, hey, there's her mother right there. Just, just newsflash, this is not my wife. This is her mother. <laughs> but I saw Tiffany. You did not see Tiffany. She, she's at the hospital with Jaden. You didn't see Tiffany. But I'm sitting there like, ooh, this don't, this don't look good. She said, hey, let's, let's take a ride to Big Lots. Went to Big Lots, bought a heater, put a towel under the door, plugged the heater up. That's when I knew she loved me. She showed me an action in the midst of my flaw. She could have been like, ooh, you sorry. You ain't got no money to pay your bills. I ain't going to be kicking it with you. And she had every right. She, she had every right. She could have chucked the deuces and went on, but no, she loved me through it, right? She loved me through it. Not only that, but she cooked string beans like she's 65 years old. <laughs> that action right there, I said, yeah, I think I'm going to put a ring on it. Uh-oh, like, uh, uh, uh I, I found her. Uh. Yeah, that action got me. Bro, that, bro, them string beans be smacking, bro. Sometimes I ask her just to cook string beans, nothing else, just cook string beans. So her actions, her actions is what showed me she loved me. What do our actions say, right? Now, I know we're not Israelites at the, mount, at the foot of Mount Sinai, right? But there's a todi that we can lift up non-verbally by being ye separate and coming from amongst them. Mm, there's a thank. Thanksgiving we can, we, can, we, can, we can express by being holy because he is holy. By denying ourselves daily and taking up our cross. Huh? By counting it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Huh? The new commandment I give you that ye love one another as I had loved you. Uh-oh. That means I love without preferences. So I'm going to love the unlovable. You get on my nerves. But because of what God did for me, I'm going to love you anyway. Thank you, God. That's my thank you. Huh? Pray for those who persecute you. Forgive those as God has forgiven you. That's how we say thank you by daily submitting to God. And to me, that carries more weight than just a song. I could be wrong. But it's the life we live when we leave here that says, I appreciate the doors you've opened. I appreciate the blessings you've blessed me with. I appreciate and I'm going to show you by every day I get up, God. I'm submitted to you. I'm surrendered to your will. Whatever you desire of me, God, even if I don't understand it, I trust you, God. If I don't know where to go, I'll seek you for the way to go. When I feel tired, I'm going to ask for strength to go through. I ain't going to quit on you, God. Here I am, Lord. I am your vessel, a living sacrifice. To me, that's how you say thank you to a God who gave his only son on the cross and then continues to bless you every day. I was like this like, man. He was looking for a response, but one of obedience. And it was conditional. Like, you got to think about it. He says, now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice. He was, even though he's God, and he could have been like, this is what you'll do, he was giving them options. What kind of, that's the kind of God we serve. He said, you, now, nah, they weren't going to be free from the consequences. But he was saying, you ain't got to, but if you do, which brings me to my third point, and I'm going to get on out y'all way and let y'all go and enjoy the rest of y'all Thanksgiving uh, leftovers. <laughs> what? I ate mine yesterday. It was smacking. <laughs> I ain't spending no money. <laughs> no, no. Just, hey, sis, you just got to heat it up real good. You got to <laughs> put, put a little bit of that cold, that little sauce, that little <laughs> grease ball, put it on top. Heat it up real good. Tastes like they just made it yesterday. But, but he says, if, if you what? If you obey my voice, how do, we, how do we hear his voice? By being in his word. By being in prayer. 
if we obey the instructions that we have received, my last point, we remember, we respond. My last point, we'll, we'll receive a reward. What is the reward? That ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And verse 6 says, and he shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. God takes the unworthy and says, I choose you. If there ain't enough for, for surrendering your life to him, I don't know what he is. A holy God takes unholy people. Gonna, he's going to teach them how to be holy. He says, and if you accept, if you accept, you will be a, he says here, a peculiar, hold up, let me find my notes, a peculiar treasure. It really means in the Hebrew, his personal possession. I, I want to be God's possession. He takes care of his people very well. That's all right with me to be his possession. He says, you will be my peculiar treasure, and then you're going to be a what? Verse 6 says, a kingdom of priests, a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. They are not yet, but they, they'll become that. That's the type of God we serve, that he takes the unworthy and elevates them. But all we have to do is submit. All we have to do is surrender. We'll be a kingdom of priests. That's why the scripture says we are a, a, a royal priesthood, right? A holy generation that have been called out of darkness into what? The marvelous light that we should show forth the praises of God. It is our job as the kingdom of priests, as the holy nation, to be a light to the rest of the world and show them the type of God we serve. Look at verse 7, and I'm, I'm going to let y'all get out of here. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. Fun fact, they hadn't even received the law yet. They're right now agreeing to go in covenant with God. They don't even know what his regulations are going to be yet. But based on what he's done, he's saying, based on what I've done getting you out of Egypt, is that enough for us to be in covenant together? <laughs> the manna, giving you water in the desert, putting, opening the Red Sea, going on dry ground, killing your enemy, freeing you from slavery, is that enough? Is that enough for you and God to be in covenant? Is that enough? No, no, Siri. Is that enough for you and God to be in commitment together? Has he done enough? And the crazy thing is, they said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. But what the people promised and what they did were two different things. Y'all know about Israel, right? The golden calf. The judges that had to remind them and the people did right, they did what was right in their own eyes over and over again. Here, here are these people that constantly turned their back on God, but God still chose them. If that ain't enough to be thankful for, I don't know what he is. He still chose them to be his peculiar treasure. He still chose them to be his, his uh, kingdom of priests, to be his holy nation. And I'm here to tell you that it's an honor to be chosen by God, especially when you're not worthy. It's an honor to be called his son. It's an honor to be called his daughter. And I know ministry get hard, but it's still an honor to serve unto God. I don't deserve to be standing here before y'all this morning. Ain't nothing I did that, deserved, that I deserve to stand here and preach this message. I ain't that holy. I ain't that righteous. But it's only by his grace and his mercy. And for that alone, God, I thank you. God, I give you praise. That you would take a, a look. I can't say what I want to say. But you take me and use me for your kingdom, I'm honored. Though sometimes I get flustered, I'm honored. Sometimes I get tired, but I remember the God I serve. And what he pulled me out of, what he delivered me from. 
Come on, somebody. What's crazy is some people don't look at that as a reward. <laughs> I don't want to be his peculiar treasure. I don't want to be his priest. Get somebody else. <laughs> I don't want to be his holy nation. I like what I like. So we don't look at it as a reward. But I'm here to tell you, if you're going to say thank you, your actions, you have to speak louder than your words. You can sing it as loud as you want to. But God knows how much you thank him when you leave out these doors by how you live your life. And maybe someone here on the live stream today watching, pray that, that this message has encouraged you to give him a thanks that's nonverbal. To give him a thanks that's backed up with action, with servitude, with submission unto God. And maybe you don't know this Jesus that we're talking about, we're singing about this God that we're worshiping, that we're lifting up from the text. I encourage you to open your heart today and let him in. Hallelujah. I encourage you to open up your heart today and repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've sinned, but I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. So come into my life. Come into my heart and fulfill your will in me. Tell him, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Come on, give God some toda in the house today. God bless you, new community.